Oh, Cecil, do you all, you all really, everybody has their tree up and everything? No, not everybody's ready. How about letter to Santa? Has everybody written their letter to Santa? I had help this year with writing my letter to Santa. Do you want to hear it? It's not too long. Here it is. Dear Santa, all I want for Christmas is a fat bank account and a thin body. Please do not confuse the two like you did last year. <laughs> Thanks, Peggy, for helping me write my Christmas <laughs> This third uh, Sunday in Advent is all about love, and oh, I agonize over talking about love every time I... Because it's such an overused word, it's so misunderstood, and yet it's the most important the most important quality of the Christ that we could have. So misunderstood. And I think that's why I love Christmas so much, because at the time of the year of Christmas, that energy of the whole planet is, is higher into that vibration of love. People, even through the presence, people are giving to each other. People are joyous, happy, and you feel that higher vibrational presence. I always say love is a creative power of the universe. It's not about lovey-dovey, it's the creative power of the universe. So if we give love to an idea, we're lifting it up to that higher vibrational state where it will be made manifest on earth as it is in heaven. But most of what we desire doesn't become manifest because we're in that lower vibration of fear. Oh, it's not going to work, it can, something will go wrong. And so you can see the manifesting power of giving love to it rather than being in fear about it or in that lower vibrational states. <laughs> As we look at the world situation lately, it, it doesn't look like love is winning some days. It, doesn't, it appears not to be. Most people are in fear, not love. And this week, you know, I made the mistake this week. I turned on and watched the news for a bit. Why I did that, I, I don't know. It, it always, you know, it does it to me. It books me in when I watch it. And so I suddenly became very sad when I heard something. It doesn't matter what it was. It just took me into that energy of sadness, which is, you know, a lower vibrational energy. And fortunately, the voice sometimes breaks through my mind, which, thank God, it happens. And I heard the voice repeating the, the words from Romans 8. All things work together for good to those who love God. All things work together for good. And it helped me to shift out of that sadness back up into a higher state of mind. And if we look at that, that verse in the Bible, you know, it ends with, with those who love God. But God is not a being in the sky that we give love to. God is love itself. So it could end with all things work together for good to those who love. To those who are in that higher vibrational state instead of the lower vibrational states that I can slip into real easy. If I hear something, see something. But before we can rise up, something's got to give. Something's got to give so that we can rise up. And Emerson, all the way back to Emerson, don't you love Emerson? He had something he called the law of compensation. The law of compensation says if you want that higher thing, you have to make room for it. Something must be eliminated in order to have that higher thing, that higher desire. So if at Christmas time we're here to birth the second coming, you know the second coming is when we awaken to the Christ within ourselves. Something has to be removed, those blocks to love's presence. Just have to be let go of. Let go of all the fear, let go of all the hate, let go of all the judgment and we will immediately rise up. Now, our Tuesday morning book study thought that was what we were doing when we started the book, The Art of Happiness. And you hear the chuckling from those who are taking the book study. We realized that every week we came in thinking we were going to read about happiness, and it was instead the whole book was about the blocks to love's happiness, which we all know about and we just were getting a little weary of, you know. And, and, and then it was more about the co-author than the Dalai Lama himself and talking about some of the spiritual practices that we in unity don't necessarily agree to. We honor all philosophies, we honor all paths that lead to God, but we don't feel we have to take on the suffering of others. 
I can heal you through prayer without taking on your suffering. Thank you very much. I don't need to take that on. But, you know, I can, I can do the healing prayer without that. So, but we all agreed on one thing. We all agreed that we absolutely love the Dalai Lama. We absolutely adore him. We want to eat him up. Because he is always in that higher vibrational energy of love and light and joy. Has nothing to do with his philosophy. Has nothing to do with theology. He's always in that state. And when you're in his presence for anyone who's gone to see him or hear him, immediately the whole crowd shifts into that higher energy. So, we, you know, we love him. Just like Pope Francis. I love Pope Francis. I can't handle the theology of the church I grew up in, but I love Pope Francis. He's in the higher vibrational state. He lives what he believes. Beautiful man. I love Martin Luther King. He was a fundamentalist Christian. <laughs> I couldn't abide by the theology, but I love the man. He was always in that higher vibrational state. He was a force for love in the world. All these great people are. When we are in the presence and practice the presence of love, Anybody who comes into that experience is transformed. Think of the power just by being in that higher vibrational state. And it has nothing to do with any imperfections you might have. All these great people have imperfections. We all do. It doesn't have anything to do with being perfect, but just being in that higher state. And then we can go to 2 Corinthians. If anyone is in Christ, which means if anyone is in that higher vibrational state of love, He's a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come from that higher place of being. You know, in the state of duality, you ever notice that people are in love, are different? They shine, they radiate. They're, they're just out there. They're healthy again. They're vibrant. They've got energy. They're like new people. You can always tell when somebody walks in that's in love. They're just in la la land, they're shining. <laughs> love does that to you. And maybe that's why Jesus, when he asked what the greatest law was, instead of getting into an argument about which law was better, he said there is only one law that's important. The law of love. The only law. And he was speaking to these legalist, logical mind people. Everybody knows somebody anal retentive, right? <laughs> and you know, they're just so in their head. They couldn't believe that the power of love could possibly be greater than logic or reason. They're like Dr. Spock. It's not logical. You know? How could love be greater than that? Let's look at the law of love. You must love God with all your heart and all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. Interesting. Those of you who came to meditation last night, that uh, Wednesday night, uh, you know, Michael finishes with a little bit of channeling from the Ascended Masters. And we were driving home and he said, you know, when I got done, the Masters had more to say. But I, I, think, they, I think they were talking to me because all week long I was whining to Michael, I'm going to talk about love this week, you know. What should I say about love? Blah, 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 blah. I feel like Charlie Brown. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> talk about love. And he said, the Ascended Masters said, Self-love is the most important. Self-love is. If you don't love yourself, if you're not in that vibrational state of love for yourself, how can you give it to others? How can you give it to others? How can you feel it with God? We have to rise up from those lower vibrational states to be that presence of love in the world. So falling in love with yourself is the greatest thing we could do. Now, I'm not talking about ego arrogance. That's called being full of yourself, <laughs> which is different than loving yourself. So what does that mean? How do you love yourself? I get tired of people telling me, Anne-Marie, just got to love yourself. What does that mean? What does that look like? Well, I think the main thing is what it doesn't look like. When we stop all that judgmental self-talk, oh, I'm not good enough, I'm not, I can't do this, you know, berating ourselves, feeling guilty, judging ourselves. I make at least three mistakes before lunch every day, you know. <laughs> but I still have to love myself in that. Can you love me if I make three mistakes before lunch? Oh, yeah. 
I can love you if you make three mistakes before lunch. It's not about what we do. It's not about our experience. That's not who we are. It's just an experience. And our perceptions of ourself are false. They're full of self-loathing. The Master said through Michael, our inequities are a compulsion. We buy into them. We really get into them. Quit telling your story of self-loathing. Instead, let go of judgment. Did I learn from it? Did I learn something from those three mistakes? Yeah, I did. I've learned from everything in my life, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and I won't tell you which I do the most. I've learned from all of them. And when you learn, then you open to love itself. Oh, I learned something from that. I don't have to get into self-loathing. And if we get into those cycles, anybody here get into those recycles or those repeat patterns that we do over and over again? We can love ourselves even if we're repeating them again and again. Because when you love yourself, it releases the guilt and the fear. That's what it does. It releases those lower vibrational states of guilt and fear just by loving. Your shadow is part of you. My shadow is part of me. And all lessons, all lessons are about love. Every single one. Now people say, oh, but if I don't have guilt or judgment, I'll do something bad. I'll become bad. And I always say, you know what, honey, the law of cause and effect will take care of that. <laughs> I don't have to judge myself because when I do those three stupid things before lunch, I've got to live with the effect of them. If I make a mistake, that which I put out comes back. I've got to deal with it. I have to suffer the consequences. I'm not being punished. Those are the consequences. I don't need judgment to learn. I just see, oh, the consequences of this is this. Therefore, I don't have to do that again. But like Mike Michael said the other night, just don't hammer the nail on the cross yourself. Anybody here hammer the nail on the cross yourself? Or as the other I say every Easter, Dolly Parton said, get off the cross, the world needs the wood. <laughs> So we have to accept ourselves just the way we are. The thought of love created you. You're made of the very substance of love. So we have to stop caring so much what other people think, stop being someone else, being acceptable to them. How many here have poured love into a relationship so much that you've lost yourself? You've given yourself away. Then they're done that. Then they're done that. It's not healthy and it's not loving yourself. Love is the one-size-fits-all answer. There's finally a one-size-fits-all that works. And that's the power of love. Charles Fillmore, the founder of Unity, the co-founder of Unity, said love is the great harmonizer and healer. Whoever calls on God as the Holy Spirit for healing is calling on divine love by whatever name you use. You're calling on love itself. Divine love will bring your own to you. Now, isn't that interesting? What does that mean? Bring your own to you. Remember last week I talked about the mental equivalent? So if your your own is all those thoughts of self-loathing, what are you going to get? Self-loathing self back at you. Yeah. But if you're in that presence of love and not judgment and acceptance of yourself, love will adjust all misunderstandings and make your life and affairs healthy, happy, harmonious, and free. Wow. That's a lot for one thing to do, the power of love. Now, how many here have read any of Catherine Ponder's books? You're, you're, we're all showing our age, everybody who's read Catherine Ponder. But she was a, a great minister, and she wrote a lot of books on prosperity, and it was all about the power of love, every one of them. So she had three different ways of praying. The first way is for others, and it's praying for yourself, and then we'll pray for the church. So I'm going to give you an example of each. If you want to use the power of love, and you can reword these however you want to word them. The shorter, the more powerful they are, I think. This is her prayer for other people in your life. Divine love is doing its perfect work in and through them now. Would you say that with me? Divine, Divine love is doing its, its perfect words. work. In and through them now. One more time. Divine love is doing its perfect work in and through them now. 
Did you notice nowhere in that prayer does it say, Oh God, if you could make them do this, if you could have them do this, they're not doing it right. And I want to make sure it's done the right. No, it just says divine love It's doing the perfect work in and through them. It takes all judgment away. It takes all control out of the way. You're just calling forth divine love in their life. I have seen love heal people with nothing but the power of love. I've seen love bring synchronicity. I love the word synchronicity. Shift things in the universe to manifest the right job, the right home, the right prosperity. Just the whole universe shifts to bring that to you. All ideas that I have given love to, I've been able to manifest in my life. My love for the West and Arizona brought me here with you today. I wouldn't be here if I would just love in Arizona all the time. No matter where I was, I just loved Arizona. I had to end up there. There was no other. My mental equivalent had to be here. Okay, so how do you pray for yourself? Well, Catherine Ponder, using the power of love, divine love now draws to me all that would heal me, bless me, and prosper me. Let's get a little longer, so it's a three-parter. The first part, divine love. Together, divine love. Now draws to me, now draws to me, all that would heal me, bless me, and prosper me. All that would heal me, bless me, and prosper me. Together, divine love now draws to me, all that would heal me, bless me, and prosper me. <sighs> and you can change those words, whatever you want to draw to you have the mental equivalent with the power of love. And it can't not happen. Okay, let's pray for the church. This is a real long one, so we'll have to do this. And we're bigger, we need longer prayer, right? <laughs> divine love flows through unity in the valley. Together, divine, divine love, love flows, flows through unity, unity in the valley. valley. With all the healing and prospering power of love, with all the healing and prospering power of love, Moving in and through all. Moving in and through all. See how simple it is? You just acknowledge the presence of divine love. Call forth the power of love. Feel it. Go into the vibrational state of it. And you're immediately lifted up to where it already exists. Not in this world of duality. We don't see it. It doesn't look like it's here, but as soon as we pray ourselves up. Prayer is not to change the outer. It's to lift our state of mind to where it already is. That's why prayer practitioners don't... You're not praying to control other people. You're praying to lift your consciousness until you only see them whole and well and happy, prosperous, abundant. You know, we're having to pick another book study now that we're fast-forwarding through the one we're reading. And the one I'm recommending, we haven't voted on it yet, but I'm putting a plug in for voting on it is there's a new Unity book now. They're using it all across the Unity movement. Uh, Unity Village, they're using it for their prayer book now. How to pray without talking to God. How to pray without talking to God. And it's all about Unity's powerful way of praying. You know, love is like we've got this nuclear power inside of us. Like enough nuclear power to blow up this place. And we're not using it. It's just rusting, going to waste all that nuclear power within us. And all we have to do is use it toward prayer. I think sometimes we're so afraid of the transformative power of love. We're afraid we might have to give up something, give up those lower vibrational states that we can get ourselves into. But, uh, Gary Renard in the book, The Disappearance of the Universe, said, you know, the real test of whether or not one was progressing on their chosen spiritual path had nothing to do with the spiritual experience. You know, we all want to have this great spiritual experience. It has nothing to do with that. The real question you should be asking is, am I becoming more loving, more peaceful, more forgiving? Have I taken responsibility for my life? Do I understand the folly of judgment? That's how to tell if your spiritual path is working. How much more loving are you today? So this week, when you go home and finish your letter to Santa, <laughs> ask for more love. Be willing to let go of the blocks to love's presence and love yourself in the process. Let's go into prayer now and use that healing power of prayer. 
God, we are willing to let go of this lower vibrational state of mind. We're willing to forgive, to change our thinking, to see it differently. Help us to lift up to that higher state of the vibration. The power of love moving in and through us is now lifting us to that higher state of mind where there is only wholeness, harmony, peace, and joy. And all that is needed is here for you in this higher state of being. Only good can come to you. And we know for each one of you, God is turning all things to good in your life for those who love. And we just say thank you, Father, Mother, God, in the nature of Christ. And so it is. Amen. Amen.